Hello, everyone. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I am Daniel Goodwin. Over there is John Lodowski. We are from Milwaukee to Nashville. Our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Walker, 202 West Iron Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. How you doing, John? Um, almost completely better from my bout with RSV that's lasted a month. I know that pain, except for now I'm dealing with allergies ever since I got home. <laughs> uh, but it is what it is. Hey, it, it all works that uh, we're doing the show a little later because I got a bunch of graphics done, so. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I got to go to the Wave game. <laughs> Kudos to the Wave and their slaughter of the St. Louis ambush. <laughs> yeah. I was sending John's uh, wife photos of the score. <laughs> like every 30 seconds, score. score. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I was one of them nights. Um, but I'm going to let turn this over to John while I try to figure out my problem here all righty so today the nashville predators took on the carolina hurricanes in carolina shots on goal in the first period carolina outshoots nashville 11 to 7 in the second period nashville outshoots carolina 14 to 7 in the third period carolina outshoots nashville 13 to 8 and in total carolina outshoots nashville 31 to 30 now, in the face-off circle, Carolina was better by a little bit at 55.4%, to Nashville's 44.6%. On the power play, Nashville goes one for three with six penalty minutes, while Carolina goes two for three with six penalty minutes. Carolina out-hit Nashville 17 to 13. Nashville out-blocked Carolina 20 to 15. Um... Carolina had seven giveaways to Nashville's three, and Nashville had six takeaways to Carolina's five. Scoring in the first period at the 518 mark for Nashville was Yusuf Parson and scoring his sixth of the year, assisted by Tommy Novak, his seventh. Then scoring at the 1023 mark was Nozen for Carolina. Scoring his ninth of the year on the power play, assisted by Drury, his seventh, and Nakis, his 14th. Then at the 12-13 mark, uh, D'Angelo scores his second of the year on the power play with an assist from Bunting, his 12th. Sorry about that. Then scoring in the second period was Roman Yossi with his seventh with an assist from Ryan O'Reilly, his 12th, and Gustav Nyquist, his 16th assist. Yep. That's actually really good for Goose. Um, then uh, Jordan Chatfield scores his, or Jalen Chatfield, sorry, Jalen Chatfield scores his uh, third of the year with an assist from Michael Bunting, his 13th. And uh, Jordan Martinuk, his 17th. Then Sebastian Ajo, the forward, not the defenseman that plays for the Islanders. Um, he scored his 11th with an assist from Seth Jarvis, his 11th, and Nosen, his 10th. That was at the uh, 509 mark. So literally it went Yossi at the 345, Chetland at the 450, and Ajo at the 509 mark. So after that, Ryan O'Reilly scores a power play goal with his 13th with an assist from Forsberg, his 19th, and Yossi, his 18th. Then at the 9.51 mark, um, Natchez scores his 9th, and that was unassisted. Then at the 10.18 mark, Barry scores his first of the year, assisted by Smith, his 8th, and Tomasino, his 9th. Then in the third, the noted goal scorer, Jeremy Lazan, scores his second. <laughs> <laughs> the known goal scorer. I'm just kidding. Um, Jeremy Lazan gets a rare goal from him, uh, more of a defensive defenseman. But he got one. Uh, yep. His second of the year with an assist from Luke Evangelista, his 11th, and Parson in his third assist this season. Uh, then 
you know, who is it but the Pringle Man? <laughs> you know, the guy that uh, George Kittle can't get enough of. Bill Forsberg, his 16th in overtime. His second overtime goal in uh, many games. I think it's literally back-to-back -back games. I believe it is. With an assist to Dusty, his 19th, and O'Reilly, his 13th. Ryan O'Reilly. Not to be confused with his brother who plays for the Admirals. Which is up next. <laughs> um, in that for the... Oof. Uh, in that for the... Ranta. Yeah, it's Ranta. Okay. Ranta stops 24 of 30 with a 80% save percentage. Um, in that for the Preds was Lankanen stopping 83.9 with 26 of 31. Um, uh, your three stars of the game are... Uh, third star of the game is Martin Nikas with a goal and an assist with two points. Uh, Ryan O'Reilly with a goal and two assists for three points. And Roman Yossi with a goal and an assist and three points. And that'll do it. Your Nashville Predators beat the Carolina Hurricanes. Putting the Preds into, well... They're on a three-game win streak. Um, and itching ever so close to those Winnipeg Jets. And uh, I mean, it's literally like four points between Nashville and first place. Okay. Which is Colorado. So it's getting close here. They have broke away from uh, St. Louis, Arizona, Minnesota, and Chicago, who are apparently doomed to be the bottom dwellers this year. Um, But let's get into the next game, because we got three of them. <laughs> so today, the Admirals took on the Manitoba Boos. Um, Don't mind if I do here, but John, but I got you covered. Okay. The, first, the Admirals outshot the Boos 20 to 9. In the second period, the Moose outshot the Admirals 14 to 7 and 8 apiece in the third for uh, each team. Um, the Admirals went 1 for 7 on the power play while the Moose went uh, 0 for 4. The Admirals had 13 minutes, uh, 5 infractions, while the Moose had 19 minutes, 7 infractions. Where at one point in the first period, they had had, um, I think it was like, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4 infractions, 5 infractions. On one power play. Where they had like guys playing rotate on and out of the box for Manitoba. It was pretty weird. Um, so at this point, I'll turn the scoring over to John. All right. Scoring in the first period at the 1535 mark was Fedor Svechkov. Scoring his seventh of the year on the power play. Assisted by Dennis Garyanov, his 13th, and Mark Jankowski, also his 13th. Then in the second period at the 237 mark, the Admirals get on the board for Cal O'Reilly, scoring his third of the year, assisted by Anthony Angelo, his fourth, and Reed Schaefer, his third. Then at the 637 mark, the Admirals score again with a goal from Joachim Kemmel, his sixth of the year, assisted by Fedor Svechkov, his eighth. Then at the 8.23 mark, the Moose finally get on the board with goal from Wyatt Bongiovanni, his seventh, assisted by Kyle Capobianco, his 13th, and Parker Ford, his fifth. That was shorthanded. Then in the third, the Admirals uh, assistant captain Cal O'Reilly scores his fourth with an assist from um, Roland McEwen, his fifth, and Mark Delgado, his ninth. Uh, then Del Geiso gets his first of the year with a beautiful play from Joachim Pebble, which he gets the primary assist on this with his 10th and an assist from Cal O'Reilly, his 6th. Cal O'Reilly is a point-making machine in this one. Yeah. Um, 
the Admirals win this one five to one. Three stars of the game, and I'm only doing three stars of the game first because there's a goalie in it. Mm -hmm. And that is Yaroslav Askarov. I wore his jersey all day today. <laughs> <laughs> like, John, I think, saw me wearing it this morning or so. I, wait, we didn't video call. We just... didn't video call to me yet. <laughs> No, my wife saw me in it and went, what are you doing? You're supposed to be going to a Wave game. I'm like, I got it covered. Much love to the Wave. I'll give them a little props on the show. This is their old jersey. You can pick up the new one at the uh, team store. I believe the uh, uh, even when, during Admirals games, they are out. It is their 40th anniversary jersey. It is only for one year. So if you're a Wave fan or have been in the past and want a piece of Wave history, um, there's a, a wave jersey that's literally that just it's their jersey with the number forty on the back of it. And while well, you're at the team store, make sure to pick up an Admirals jersey or some merch too. Yep, the, or Panthers or uh, yeah, or Panthers. Yeah, that that all goes to help the Wisconsin Wisconsin Center District uh pay their rent. <laughs> <laughs> um, second star was Fedor Svechkov with a goal and an assist, and first star was Cal O'Reilly with three points with a goal and two two goals and one assist. In net for the uh, Manitoba Moose, no stranger to that guy, no. Colin Delia stopping 30 of 35, as I said, Yaroslav Askarov stopping 30 of 31, only allowing one goal against. Now, I do know that he was looked at. This is not good attendance for the Moose at 3,552. No. Without the Jets in town, you would think it would be a lot higher. Right. Um, your referees were Adam Belosic and Matthew Batini. Uh, linesmen were Luke Pye and Josh Miko. Um, the Admirals are back at it against the Moose on Sunday, I believe. I believe so. Yeah. The Admirals are now um, also gained a nice little two points thanks to the Grand Rapids Griffins beating the Texas Stars today. And with four that, points back now from the Stars. What was that? We're four points back from the Stars now. Yeah, four points back. And, I mean, we're pretty dead on with them as far as record goes. They're 7-3-0-0, oh, and, oh, and we're 7-2-1-1, one, one in and that's our last 10. Yeah. Everybody else is about 500 or less in our division. Um, The Wild are on a two-game winning streak since getting smacked around by us last weekend. Um, Grand Rapids has won, just won like I said. Uh, Rockford's looking like they're in a bit of a slump, losing six, seven straight. Um, so there's a bit of a, a nice little gap starting to build in our division um, amongst <clears throat> um, the Gulls still on their nice little trend towards the top of their division as well. Um, going around the division uh I will beat Rockford two to one. Okay. All right. To the ECHL. I did not want to talk about this, but uh, I guess we kind of have to. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'll just let you start. And okay. <laughs> All right. The All Jack details. Yeah. The Jacksonville Icemen took on the Atlanta Gladiators today in Atlanta. Shots on goal in the first period. Jacksonville outshoots Atlanta six to five. In the second period, Jacksonville outshoots Atlanta six to five. In the third period, Atlanta outshoots Jacksonville thirteen to eleven, and both teams had a total of twenty-three shots each. Jacksonville goes two for four on the power play with eleven minutes four infractions, while Atlanta goes zero for three with thirteen minutes and five infractions. Uh, scoring in the first period at the 141 mark for Atlanta was Cody Sylvester, assisted by Jack Matier and Micah Miller. Then the scoring for Atlanta at the 614 mark 
was Evan Doherty, assisted by Dylan Vander Esch and Zach Yoder. And that will do it for the Atlantic Gladiators offense. Uh, after that, Christopher Brown scores for the Jacksonville Iceman with assists from former Milwaukee Admiral Brendan Fortunato and Brendan Harris. Uh, then at the that was at the fifteen thirty nine mark. Then at the eighteen twenty two mark, Riley Riley Fiddler Schultz with an assist from Christopher Brown and Brendan Harris. And then in the third period, uh, looks like Garrett Van Weil and Chris Grado with the assist at the fifteen sixteen mark. Um. Uh, trying to get a um yeah um pro cop got hit pretty hard in this game i'm not sure what his stats look like for toi but oh he played All right, I need the other stat sheet. Do, 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 game sheet. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. or they don't have it. <laughs> In net for um, uh, the uh, Jacksonville goalies with Mike Vernon. Huh? You're talking about the Wiley goalie from the 90s? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Playing against Gustav Greggles, who stopped uh, 20 of 23. He stopped 21 of 23. Obviously, you know the score. They had similar shots. Um, Jacksonville scored twice on the power play. Uh, like you said, Jacksonville was two for four while Atlanta went over for three. Uh, your three stars of the game all came from Jacksonville. Uh, uh, Brown with uh, the third star, Harris, first star, and Van Weil, first star. Uh, Harris was second star, Van Weil, first star with the game winning goal. Uh, Will Kelly was your referee with an assist, assist assisted by linesman Noah Oakman or Ackman, Ackman, and Tyler Weil. Um, Atlanta is back after it tomorrow against the Greensville Swamp Rabbits, who probably have one of the coolest logos in all of hockey. <laughs> Uh, it's a rabbit with a carrot as a hockey stick. Um, uh, the head coach for uh, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to do this. Um, head coaches for um the Admirals game. <laughs> uh, head coach for the uh Moose is uh, you know, the return of the back, Mark Morrison. Mm -hmm. Um, a former most longtime uh, Moose player, Nolan Bumgarner, um, Eric Dubois, and former Moose goalie and Admirals goalie Drew McIntyre. Um, the uh, head coach for the Admirals is Kyle Taylor, assistant coach Scott Ford, and Greg Rollo. Um, for the Iceman game, the uh, head coach for Jacksonville is Nick Luco. With an assist, assistant coach Brad Mashinter. Really? The former Rockford Ice Hog. Uh, head coach for Atlanta is Derek Nesbitt, uh, the former Wolf, and Eric Neely. Um. Before we jump into our future plans, um, just so that people are aware, we are fully aware of what happened in Chicago that does not align with who we are as hockey fans. Hate is hate and it won't be accepted in any manner. In this sport, in any manner. That is our only statement. We have no further statement on it because I don't feel like giving my opinion. <laughs> um, regarding the dirty hits lately, 
either let him fight or start suspending guys for hitting like that. You got two options. And I, 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 I think this is becoming a problem across hockey. I saw it in the E today. I saw it in the N today. I saw it in the A today. I saw it twice in the A today. One from our guy, one from their guy. Well, and, and I'm going to even say that as a as a fan of Svechkov, I'm not a fan of how he hit him. But at the same time, he did lower his head. I'm not saying it was like a dirty, dirty hit, but he did kind of. And there's nothing you can do there. That's why he only got the two-minute boarding. That's also why they didn't kick the ever-loving tar out of him. So, just saying. Either let him fight or let him play. Because eventually you're going to end up with somebody getting seriously hurt. Unless you want another death in hockey this year. Just saying. It's like kind of one of them years for uh, hockey where it's just like, uh, another bad hit, another bad hit, another bad hit. Um, other than that, um, John, we do have some holiday graphics coming up. We do, right? Yeah. Yo, we have holiday graphics. <coughs> Um, just note that, um, was it, uh, the 23rd game, I believe we are not covering. I don't know. Because, um, I'm, I'm deciding to take some time with my family to get some last minute holiday stuff in to prepare for the next couple days, obviously. Um, the Admirals do play in um, Rosemont against the Wolves. Um, if you do see us, it'll be like literally us blasting the score onto a screen. <laughs> <laughs> and by that meaning, literally one of us is recording a video going, we won this, blah, blah, blah. These people scored. These people were dead. <laughs> Like, it's going to be a bad little, like, 20 seconds. Like, you know, so just a fair warning. Um, We've got a lot we've got to get done before the holidays. Well, I do. He got all his done tonight. <laughs> yes, almost all of it. So. <laughs> all righty, folks. Um, I thank you all for watching. Just remember, we are from Milwaukee to Nashville. Please don't forget, please like our like our videos and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like our Facebook for all our graphics. Um, our shows are solely on YouTube now. So thank you and have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. See you tomorrow.